G'day. Footy's back. That's right. I'm Jack Silvani. Wait, no, I'm not. I have both my knees intact at the moment. Jeez. I am James Clements. This is the AFL Today Show, your new favourite one-stop shop for all things footy. This is the Midweek Madness Show. There is a lot of madness and it's midweek. And I'm joined, as always, by a couple of local footy nuffs, weirdos, some would call them AFL experts, a scant few, shall we say. There's Alex Donnelly over there. Yeah, we don't have much time, Jim, today. We've got that much going on at the moment from CEO conferences to MRO and Stats Guy loving the academies again. He's oh. joining the CSIRO. I don't know. Yeah. We're just going to mix it all <laughs> up. He's going to the ACCC. Yeah, yeah uh, something like that. NCAA? <laughs> <laughs> it's just an AAV, I don't know. <laughs> uh, in the middle is the Stats Boy. Yeah, very excited. Uh, I would have liked to see if you are if you were Jack Silvani, the Blues long sleeve. All the Silvani's used to wear the long, long sleeves. I wouldn't mind seeing that for you next time, Jim. I am actually wearing my Carlton uh, throwback yeah. 95 Premier's T-shirt. Uh, first time I've broken down on the show, I think... I thought you were wearing it a couple of weeks they ago. They lost the next two games. Yeah. I'm now tempting fate. We're going to turn this <laughs> I around. I thought you said first time I've broken down on the show. That's not the first time. All right, settle down there, four foot two with an attitude. Oi! You still haven't uh, done the Short Kings video. Four Seriously. Well, well. Four foot two with an attitude. Four foot two with an attitude. Actually, do we have the measuring tape? Because he said he was like oh, 185 five, centimeters or I something. I said five eight. That's not. That's yeah. 173. Uh, Leo, hunt down some measuring tape, please. Uh, once again, stats boy not understanding what six inches is. Anyway, <laughs> whoa. We also have a special guest today, friend of the show, Big J journalist Simeon Thomas Wilson from the Advertiser Code Sports Sports Network. All the good stuff yeah. to talk crows and power. It was pretty good because he literally came from. The Jeremy Finlayson uh, press conference, basically, Ooh, okay. where that news broke. So we'll talk about that with him. Uh, so before we get into it, of course, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel across all the socials, because footy is back. Well, it's like round 19, so it's been it's back still for back. a while. Footy still. is continuing. <laughs> yeah. Continuing to be Who's back. That is good. Let's do it. News ticker. Midweek news ticker. Hey, bit of news this week about the tribunal. What do you reckon that is, fellas? I don't know. Can you tackle in footy anymore? Apparently can you not. tackle in footy anymore? <laughs> Turns out I don't think you can. You're not allowed to tackle. What are you doing? Just let him tackle. This was ridiculous. I agree. Three weeks for Chucky Cameron. I agree with that one. That's I'm on board. Uh, a bit more three weeks, I feel like the Bedford one. I'm yeah. like, what more can you do? Yeah. And of course, the uh, Alex Davies one. Dad dog act. Three weeks, sure. That was fair, yeah. The weird one was like the elbow to the back of the old head. Yeah. From our, our man Rose's one week. Yeah. That should have been four. So you might what as well just punch someone, elbow someone, you're going to get less than three weeks of that. Yeah. Point, whereas so. if you give someone a slight backhand, you get the same as throwing yeah. an elbow. It makes no sense. Slight make backhand. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah. Look at this. I want to give someone a slight backhand. Oh, I was just a slight backhand that broke his face in half. What are we doing? But he's a war criminal, so it's fine. <laughs> Isaac Heaney's now a war criminal. <laughs> oh, no. no. Uh, so the tribunal. So Charlie Cameron. Yep. Toby Bedford, Alex Davies, all get three weeks. The Alex Davies run was a throw at the stumps because there was an injury over the weekend to a Suns player that plays in the same position as Davies. Like, oh, let's try and get a little bit off that. Whereas Cameron and Bedford, of course, they had to challenge. Yeah, yeah. I, just, I don't understand how they, they're three weeks. Like, literally, there's there's going to be concussions in the game no matter what. Uh, we have to, We have to ban tackling. But Charlie, that, is that what we're no, doing? No, Charlie Cameron's I understand because no. he went the extra few steps and drove him into the ground. The back of his head hit the ground, concussed. Toby Bedford literally could not do anything anything else mm. whereas Chucky Cameron could have just sta stayed standing and bear hugged him but he went the few extra steps and drove him into the ground Charlie Cameron got tripped up by his legs what's he meant to do in that sort of I don't spot know. I think in so the this is like, like, like well. Alex's exploit mm. oh he could have stayed straight. he quite literally couldn't because he got tripped it's because his legs got tangled because he kept on moving yeah because they basically got tangled up mm. as part of the tackle and his point was and I actually to be honest I think it's weird that he probably should have got rubbed out the first time for the good bloke that he got off on yeah this yeah, one the, yeah it seems weird, and I don't mind his justification. He's like, what am I meant to do? Like, I got tripped up in the act of tackling, and we sort of hit the ground pretty hard because we're not able to suddenly control our, like, weight and where it's all going. I agree, yeah. And I'm like, that's fine. Like, if you can't put on defensive pressure in your forward 50, like, you're going to get absolutely caned by your coaching staff, and then you're basically going to hiding to nothing, right? Like, what are you? what is he meant to do in this entire thing? It's the so entire tough. boy's like, oh, you could have stood him up. It's like... But he could have gotten rid of the ball then. Like you tried no, to he, had, he had both arms Exactly. Pinned. He wasn't going to get rid of the footy. We're going to basically get to this point where you go, right, you can still tackle them. It's still within the rules. Yep. 
And like I find this weird part now where the AFL's like, no, what you could have done oh. is you could have released one arm. It's like, what on earth yeah, are we talking about? That's, that's, that's the Toby Bedford one. Yeah, that's that, ridiculous. If Toby Bedford releases one arm, he probably breaks his own they arm. They said on the he way should down. have like taken another step or he should have released one arm. No one's thinking about that while they're tackling but it's, in the heat of the game. It's I hate dumb. this justification yeah. action from yeah. the AFL going, well, this is what you should have done. So it's not in the rules. This, so how's this against the rules because he's done it this way? It's and this is also people like you're hearing them talk, you're like, have you ever tackled someone? No, mm. like yeah. it's it's that like the the Bedford one is way worse than the Cameron because it's Taranto gets the ball instantly Bedford tackles him on a slippery day as well wet and it just happens that the, with the way that they're going his head hits the ground yeah. it's a fo- it is a footy act if Dangerfield got off for the Walsh one Bedford should as well because it's the exact same, same action it was the same, yeah. except yeah. for is Dangerfield he- hitting with a pedigree on the way down <laughs> and is he like you know as verbose and as uh, I don't know. What a word. Very, very well spoken as Patrick Dangerfield. Mm. I'm the president of the PA. He talked for like three hours that day. Yeah. Yeah, so. he, he filibustered until yeah. he went, all right, just go just home. Just go home. Go home. I just got to go home. And have, my dinner's been sitting there for like three hours, bro. <laughs> like, what are you doing, Danger? <laughs> Other news. Some really nerdy wonk stuff. The uh, backflip on the National Graduate Academy, yeah. the old NGA, uh, for the next draft. The AFL is just like, hey, what are we going to do? Is this broken? No, let's fix it. Like, what is <laughs> happening? Oh, settle down, boys. Oh, they've really cooked it. But at least. Laura Kane's just like, oh, look over there. Well, I'll do some other stuff and we won't talk about the umpires this week. Oh, God. Yeah. And uh, so this is essentially your matching picks for people within your academies, yep. et cetera. Uh, if we explain this in sort of the lengthier way, Stats boy, you talk about Mac Andrew going to like different. Yeah, so Mac Melbourne could have gotten Mac Andrew. You got Cam McKenzie could have gone to St Kilda. This is all in the last four years because Jamara went pick one. This was this is the original rule that they want to change back to. The dogs were like, oh, we don't even have pick one, but we get get him because of that. Uh, that you had all the, that enough draft cap, and enough draft cap, and things like that in through the NGA. Then you got Cam McKenzie could have gone to St Kilda. Riley Sanders could have gone to North Melbourne. There's no, just, no, Riley Sanders. They applied, and the yeah. AFL knocked it back and yeah. like, no, you're not getting him as an academy. Yeah, but it's just under that same. The thing. Mac Andrew one's the biggest one. Whereas if uh, this year you got Essendon who are not going to be, they're going to be in finals at this rate. They, they yeah. could get a really are good, they? really yeah. good player in the uh, academy. When, yeah, the last so, four years they couldn't have. So I don't like how they're backflipping when they literally said this is a bad idea. Now they're backflipping. They're just going to change it every four years. It goes back stupid. to that. The Swans, when they picked up Errol, couldn't match a bit in the first 30 on mm. it. That was, what it was yep. when it was then, which is like, okay, so why are we now changing it when it seemingly works? Because no other clubs rated it's enough for these players. Like the Mac Andrew one's probably Balvin's Melbourne did bring him along for four years. And I, I'm all for clubs having academies because it's a pathway to the AFL that you might no, agree, traditionally yeah. have. Yeah. But it's just. But it's still, also you can't backflip on This is like choices. weirdly, sort of, just strange and not needed. Like mm. I don't think anyone was like knocking the doors down. Going, no. You know what we need to fix? This so like Isaac Thursday Kako not. can go fourteen to Essendon or yeah, whatever. But like, it's yeah, it's, it, it's more come because Gold Coast finally had the three first rounds last year. And yeah, it's not fair. It's like they probably wouldn't be playing footy if Gold Coast didn't have an, an academy. Exactly. Yeah. I think academies and like rewarding you for bringing people up through your academies, expending draft capital on them, but yeah. it might not be so much heavy draft capital. That's fine. Just find a happy middle ground. But also yep. like Gold Coast don't have father sons, hence academies. Like that's the evener. What about Gary Ablett Jr. Jr.? But do you want to go to Geelong? <laughs> Gary Ablett Jr. I don't know if there is one. There, he's got a key. He's not, that's not the name. But that's right. Should be. Yeah. How about <laughs> Nathan Ablin Jr. Nathan Ablin Jr. Nathan Ablin Jr., Jr. yeah. Daniel Gorringe Jr. <laughs> uh, no. Yeah. no one uh, wants that. Other little bits and bobs. Lance Collard. He's in trouble. He's, he's an idiot. He's an idiot. idiot. Yeah. Uh, gets suspended, dropping some uh, unsavory homophobic slurs because, I don't know, he's very clearly a moron. Yep. At some point, you should be suspended for that because you're doing the dumb thing. Don't, just, just suspended for that. And also, you should be probably doubled the suspension yeah. for so being the world's biggest idiot. How could you be that dumb? Maybe yeah. you have to what do an IQ doing? test and, and uh, no, afterwards. No, let's not if put it's really low, through an yeah. IQ <laughs> test. Plays an IQ so test. Funny, be are you smarter than a third grade? Yeah, AFL edition. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> AFL edition. That's going to look nice footy dad's coming yeah. up later. So six weeks feels light because Will Powell got five or six five, weeks. Four or five, wasn't it? And five. after yeah. Finn Mason got three or they four said and then they were said gonna, he, you know, podcasted and stuff. They said any time it happens again, they're going to up it. So they didn't so really I think much. it's also because if it was in the AFL, they probably would have gone 12, but it's VFL. So, ah, just go away. Mm. But it should be 12 because it should, it should double every it time. It was doubling before. For being that. a dummy. Yeah. Exponential. Like, like if you, the next person should be like, Season. You can't be like the fourth person and be like, oh, I didn't understand that we weren't allowed to use these words. No, that's just like, like, you're an idiot then. Yeah. What are you doing? Also, Don't use those words. It's very simple. Apparently you said it like 10 times. Yeah, so yeah. give give a week for every, every time. Yeah. 10, 
10 weeks. I reckon one oh, of the I'm opposition on players should just net, look because you said it 10 times. Yeah. Once you hit the 10 threshold, <laughs> just one whack with a 4B2. <laughs> just to, to the knee or where? Just wherever. Free Maybe shot. not the head. Free shot. Maybe not uh, the head or with head gear. Don't Maybe not to the head or to the family jewels. Uh, Fair enough. Outside of this, other bits and bobs, Finlayson. So we talk about this with Simeon later on yep. about Finlayson being out for the season for the power. Uh, we've already made our jokes with Simeon, so enjoy that chat. Yeah. Mostly it's about how Charlie Dixon is just like, oh, I'm, I'm going to keep playing. Place. This is great. Yeah. yeah. What do you look at? <laughs> Bang! And off he goes. Are you a forward? Yeah. yeah wow. I'm going to take Chicken my teammates wing. out. Chicken yeah. wing. Uh, Todd Marshall is now a test, though. We talk about this with Simeon as well, which is pretty good news if you're a power fan. Uh they are hanging on by just like, you know, yeah. the grim death they at the need, moment. They need Tom Marshall. And Finn Layson hasn't had a great year anyway, in and out, but mm. still. Out of contract. Stinks for them, so tough one. Hey, let's do a midweek winner and loser of the week. We're just going to do losers this week because I'm not entirely convinced there's too many winners, apart from maybe some of the teams who were just like, hey, maybe we can snag some of our academy dudes earlier. But losers, clarity. That's the loser this week, just yeah. clarity in general. Like- Three weeks for a tackle. Okay. Clarity and umpiring, clarity in tribunal. So clarity, clarity was everything. a big thing that Brad Scott brought up after. So Essendon do play Friday night this week against the Adelaide Croms. And they he was like, all right, could I get some clarity? If you guys are going to like really just nail down on one rule, can you let us know? Yes. Just, I don't know. Because if you get one week, you go 13 metre kick, that's ah, fine. And then one week, you go, that's got to be 17 metres yeah. and you're a dead man, stats boy. That you're was, like, jeez, where did that come from? Yeah. And Brad Scott, I think, rightfully, came out and said, hey, if you're going to be like coaching up your umpires on specific things, can you just let us know so that we're actually trying to sort of thread that needle? We'll talk about it at least. No. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Just go. <laughs> uh, and clarity as well when it comes to MRO and mm-hmm. these tackles. I think it's so inconsistent. It's so hard. I think you've seen the players come out. And look, on this show, on the, on the old AFL Today show, a lot of the time we're trying to sort of go, yeah, what – sort of footy action results in an injury, we should be trying to eradicate that from the game. Yeah. These are footy acts. It's just some of them have yeah. just been a bit wonky, right? Accidents, yeah. Like, so, well, it's like it happens Darcy Moore, the knee that he did twice just, and seriously He wasn't trying players. to No, but him, I'm just though, saying, yeah. neither was Bedford or Cameron. Yeah, I agree. They tried so hard. I Whereas think Malcolm Rose has literally tried to elbow someone and he, he gets, gets one, one week. week. Mm. What are we doing? That's a pretty intentional non-footy act, that's why. If I just clip you behind the ears. Well, yeah, I'll go. You don't I'll, do, I'll do it You've right done now. it a few like, times before. Christine would probably give you a pay rise. Uh, I don't know. You could be on. The, I'll, I'll be the new host. There we go. Come nice. be real quick. <laughs> Come here a minute. Uh, so, yeah, I think clarity is the big loser this week because yeah. what the AFL doesn't need is to have these continuing conversations between umpires, between MRO, week on, week on, week. Surely we can actually just go – Can like, I think it's the least favorite thing that footy fans want to ever talk about. Like, we don't ever want to talk about the MRO. I don't think we no. want to talk about umpires. We it just to, sticks. So quit it. Can't wait till the chicken wing becomes a suspendable offense. Who right? Well, that's well, it. Well, it almost like, was. What was it? Who was chicken, it? Chris Judd. Was Chris Judd, the chicken wing. My beloved Judd man, man of Judd. Yeah. The chicken wings are substantially more dangerous, but it's almost the only way that you can get a holding Nick the Dacos ball Nick Dacos got chicken wing the other night. It's ridiculous. It's like, I'm waiting for someone just to go, I just can crack this one. No, the best bit. was Jezza just ripping him. That yeah, was, that but was he's awesome. shooting stars him. That was yeah, hilarious. That was but great. I'm waiting for someone to go the full chicken wing and just go, try and pop a shoulder. Oh, All right, Lance good. Collard's also obviously a loser. Yeah, yes. literal loser. Let's do some midweek. Ooh, yeah, nah. Is Charlie Cameron still a good bloke? Mm. Yeah, nah. Nah. Uh, yeah. Is the tribunal I, I still, for the second time this year? Nah, I, he used his card. I don't think he was being a bad bloke. I'll, go, I'll still go, yeah. We Seems talked like about this on Sunday, I think. Yeah, yeah, you get the one get we, out of jail free. He did have that, Good yeah. guy card. So you're yeah. going, nah. So, nah, not a good bloke. Okay. Yeah. I also just don't like John Denver. <laughs> I, like, I like the Gabba. Country Road, right? don't care. Yeah, you don't you like live it. in Queensland. Oh, yeah, if he gets suspended, I don't have to hear that this week. Oh, yeah. Yeah, terrible bloke. <laughs> Doesn't like Joe Danner have, have like they have the he has a or yeah, something? Yeah, let, let it go. go. Let he it go. Might not kick that's a goal, so that's fine. That's substantially more infuriating. I, I agree. I so. need to find out what Eric Hipwoods was and if he's changed what it coming Eric into this Hipwoods? weekend. I remember. Yours is the Venger bus is coming. We know that. Stats boy, I don't know. It's like Why can't we be friends? Hey, just, that's actually, I'd, I'd <laughs> take Enter Salmon. <laughs> Yours is uh, Cancer Bats. Uh, my, yeah, mine's <laughs> Pneumonia Hawk by yeah. Cancer Bats. I thought cancer mine bats. was just going to be horror movie. <laughs> yeah, History know, like, Stranglers <laughs> by the Bronx is the best walking music you could have. So just saying. Right, is the re-establishment of NGA access an absolute rort? Yeah, nah. I don't care. I care, yeah. 
Massive, yeah. It is a bit of a raw. Just think. stop changing things that don't need to be changed, AFL. Simple as that. You've been talking about it for weeks. So nice. Uh, should GWS let Jack Buckley go to Paris to watch his partner at the Olympics? Yeah, nah. Nah. Oh. I'll go nah. It's your job to play footy, so you probably should be yeah. here. Celeste Mucci, she's going to be really good at it. Is she Olympics. like, is she, do we know if she's a medal hope or not? She is. She went to my dad's school, actually. So, uh, How is every person <laughs> from your dad's school an athlete except They've got their you? most Olympians. Four yeah. foot two. No, I, didn't, I didn't go to the Four academy. Four foot two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, don't, I think, no. It's not in the middle of the season when GWS can still make finals I, and things like that. If, if he played for like the Crows or St. Kilda, yeah, go. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, see, yeah, or season was over, I'm like, yeah, 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 see you, Jack. Exactly. And yeah, they, he's got two weeks of RDO, it's fine. <laughs> he's also a gun for them as well. Well, also, Sam Taylor still hasn't recovered from his broken ball, so. Mm. Yeah. Busted Sad. nut. Oh. Yeah. Oh, tough scenes. Uh, <laughs> is it time to admit the King Brothers are overrated? This one came <laughs> in, this in from our boss. <laughs> And to be honest, can I, I go? Know. Can I get? Can I go half half? I want to go max. Yes, yeah. Ben, Ma- nah. We've said this every week. We, max, is, max has had a horrible season. It's probably good that he was injured for the Saints just to get to get past Ooh. that. No, I shouldn't say that. That's guy pro injury. That, yeah. No, I'm not. I shouldn't He's say pro that. Pro injury and head trauma. It's fine. <laughs> Apparently, uh, no. Ben King has is, is had a great year. What is he second in the Coleman? Still, he has. Yeah. He's not overrated. So yeah, overrated when out of the uh, 28th parallel. Yeah. Underrated when at the 28th parallel. Yeah. To be fair, Ben King was horrible against North when I saw him live. So. Yeah, so that just lives to the theory. But I think he thought he was Max King because it was at Marvel. So. Ah. Mm. Did, they, did they do the body swap? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah he's they like, I'm not found playing. They freaky, freaky Friday them. <laughs> yeah. That's how it works with twins, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> That's just science. Uh, outside of this, more yeah, nahs, because we have the AFL CEO uh, conference, which apparently yeah. I wasn't invited to. I thought not. I was the CEO of the AFL. Someone hasn't told Andrew Gillen Dillon. You saw him the other day, didn't you? I did. And I think he was calling in a hit. And I'm like, oh, geez, I'm going to be ducking over here. Andrew Gillen Dillon. He's got an in for me, I'll tell you. It but is. this is talking about return to state of origin, all-star games, all this sort of stuff. Um, but really, ball tracking technology for the AFLW season is obviously exciting, a big part yeah. of what they're Thank talking God. about. Um, and so How they're talking about the draft Franks? bidding system and stuff like this as well. So it's always a pretty big deal. And they're hanging out in Perth because, sure, just a – Mid-season. Well, they went to a, to they went to a Werribee mansion last year, so they're changing it up. A yeah. Werribee? Or no, the, the, the Werribee, Werribee mansion. The Werribee mansion. <laughs> There's mean. not like multiple <laughs> mansions. I, in I'll be honest. He's not from never here. been to Werribee yeah. and don't plan on going there because it the sounds Werribee like mansion, it sucks. It's Werribee the Werribee, Werribee mansion. mansion. Yeah, the zoo. Yeah, and the mansion. The mansion. <laughs> the, the Chris Dew Great Brothers. food court. You've, you've, also, you've also got the- uh, I built a shed in Werribee. I was about to say, it's <laughs> also go. it's also where the horse is quarantined for the spring carnival, so I might have to go there. Oh, there you go. Quite seriously, I built a shed in uh, for the Chris Dew Brothers when I was a kid. Wait, what? Uh, with my with my old the man, Christy who's Brothers. a builder. And it's like, wow, do you know Ange Chris Dew? Because I'm this little yeah. tack. And they're like, yeah, he's our cousin. It's like- I still don't know to this day whether or not they're actually cousins or because their last name was cousin. Well, their last, last name was Christo. <laughs> or and they were just like Greek. It's like, yeah, we're all cousins. Their last name right. is cousin. And they're just screwing with you. You idiot ginger kid. It's like, yeah, yeah checks out. <laughs> right. But the biggest yeah nahs to come out of the AFL CEO conference right now is should the AFL introduce an in-season tournament? Oh, yeah, nah. nah. Big yes. fat nah. We have an Let's in-season go. tournament. It's, it's called, called the, the season. Eight. Yeah, I agree. What That's always we... been my approach for NBA. Mr. Long, NBA so. over here yeah. once. Uh, but this is the thing. So everyone gets enamored with an idea of, oh, we'll have our own FA Cup. It's like, no, no, no. just don't need oh, it. It makes no sense. In does that different. mean if the Sydney Swans on a, on a play local Thursday footy. night yeah. are going to play like the Sandringham Dragons? That would be cool. The... Oh, I would like that. Yeah, okay. yeah. That's a different instance of tournament. Nah, that sucks. I think, nah, I don't think there's enough space. If we can't get Thursday night footy, unless we get Thursday night footy each week about this, and that is the uh, mm. in-season tournament all season, yeah. I'm on board. Okay. Until then, shush. Uh, <laughs> other one, should the AFL introduce a finals wildcard round? Yeah, nah. 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 I love it. I knew he would. He, yeah. he's on board he wants 9th and 10th versus 7th. Because yeah, because Carlton like finishing. I around. want, in that week off, just give us knockouts. So just what, give us some so more what, knockouts. Are you talking like 7th versus 10th and 8th versus 9th? It doesn't 100%. work in AFL as well because you've got it's another tough. sports yeah, it's, seven game series. But it's, it's already also, a knockout in finals. So. We don't have footy that week and this is just Jim just going footy, 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 footy. Sorry, not machine, but footies. Uh, it's 8 versus 9 and then 7, 10. 7, 10, 8, 9, blah, 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 blah. Oh, 10 so. made it and 7 didn't. That'd should, be funny. That's crazy. The other ones are, should the AFL reintroduce a preseason tournament? No. Know? Yes. So, no. I think they should. Teams Bring back the care. Wizard Cup. What are we doing? The Wizard Cup. The Wizard Cup rule. The Ansett Cup back in my days. The best. The, the Foster's Cup. The back NAB in my Cup. Day. NAB Cup. Eh, cowards. Um, <laughs> I love the preseason tournament. You know I like what? Yeah. Woody. I hate the preseason stuff now. It's like, oh, it's You don't even know it's, it's on. Like, ah, it's go. It's like, yeah. I think the entire preseason tournament, if you want to grease the skids into your regional round, 
every single game in preseason tournament should be played in regional, regional. centers. They, yeah. they yeah. used to do that in the finals. Exactly. It was great, yeah. And they should do it. Dollar Off you go. Go. I'm used to the Swans just not caring and never winning. It's like, we're just going to play three players. Like the best six. is when the Saints were like sad when they won the Wizard Cup. Do you remember it's that the only photo? That won in this they were told century. not to smile in the photo. I'm pretty sure yeah. Carlton won a preseason cup and then won the wooden spoon. So yeah. <laughs> Good. Go. That's a good effort. Great, great times, great man. I, I, during this one's Paul Rouge years, I think they won one preseason. Yeah, game. they didn't care about it. Because I don't care. Yes, the Baltimore, opposite the Baltimore Ravens, yeah. who have like never lost a preseason game. Really? It's weird. Oh. Anyway, should the AFL reintroduce state of origin? Yeah, no. Nah. nah. Yeah. Big yeah. I reckon all star game instead See, of all state of origin. I was waiting for the all star well, game. Yeah, no. Nah. All star. Yeah, I'll, I'll take that as well. Simple. Anything as, uh, that gets the best players out there playing together. All right. Let's take a very quick break and then we will come back with a very special presentation. AFL Dads with me. If you like this show, make sure you check out all the other shows in the Sports Today Network, from the AFL Today Show to the Cricket Today podcast, the Football Today podcast, as well as NBA Australia and NFL Australia. With Sports Today, your sporting needs have never been easier to cover. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for a very special presentation. It is called... Jim's elevator pitch for Footy Dads, the TV show. I'm excited. That's right. We're talking Footy <laughs> Dads. It is every single team in the AFL. Here we go. And their coach as a dad, and then one of the players, Alex. Uh, West Coast don't have a coach. Who's their dad? No, they have the good dads. Someone's shush. I'm already, I'm already sick of you. Shush. <laughs> He yeah. put his head up, yeah. which weird. That was the weird. simple idea behind this is you have a coach who fits an archetype, a stereotype, okay. if you will, and one of the players on that list who I feel like could basically either be their son or fit another <laughs> archetype as their son, a father and son duo, if you will. Okay. This is basically we don't, you know, who's the coolest sort of footy dad out of all the coaches? We'll get there in the end, I think, with a lot of this. We'll understand it. Uh, we talked about, you know, Top five dads, like TV dads, yeah. is like a fun thing we talked about yesterday. And how I'm like, as long as no one says the dude from Hey Dad, yep. we're good. Or Bill Cosby. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Cosby. There yep. you go. He was a doctor. Anywho, <laughs> let's do footy dads. Adelaide, Matty Nix, and Riley Thrill Thrillthorpe. Why is this? This has full-blown stepdad vibes. It's like, <laughs> you're not my real dad. It's this jack son coming home going, did you sleep with my mum? It's like, no, sir. It's like, you better not. Basically, that's where we're at with Riley Thrillthorpe. Like, Matthew Nix has to call him sir. <laughs> but Matthew Nix made his brother laps the other night. Yeah. Exactly. And Riley Thrillthorpe, I'm going to go. He's not even my, my real dad. dad. He's not even my real dad. This sucks. I hate him so much. That's why he's so jacked. He's like... Yeah, if he says anything, then I'm going to bash him. Like that's what he's telling all his mates, right? He's going the beard, yeah. And like Matty Nix is like, oh, I'm not, I'm not in this for the long haul. <laughs> I, like Thrillthorpe knows that the stepdad's not going to be there for much longer. Yeah. He's on his way out. Thrillthorpe's just like, going, I'm the man of the house now. Brisbane, I love this. Chris Fagan and Lockie Neal. How do they fit this? They're just a nice, nice, exactly. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. Overachievers who spend too much time together. <laughs> yeah. Last week they built a pergola. <laughs> They've already got plans next weekend. They're going to build a shit in Werribee with the Chris Two brothers. <laughs> like they have. That's why you're off next week. Is that, that what you're doing? Yeah, build a shit. I thought so. Yeah. <laughs> But they are just like way too chummy. They're each other's best mates. They are, yeah. And it's like Chris Fagan's just so proud of him. Could he be his grand? The wife and the partner of Lockie absolutely hate him. Could he be his granddad? Possibly. Maybe, but (laughs) sorry, sorry, Chris Fagan. But at the same time, like I feel like this is just the perfect kind of like we're just good mates. Okay. It's like they just they've got a really solid, serious, happy relationship, and they are just each other's best mates. Yeah. Carlton (laughs) Vossi and Big H. Oh. And Matty Cottrell. That's right, we're going double barrel because they're all ginge. Let's go. <laughs> Harry, come on. Harry's ginge, is he? He's a bit ginge. Yeah. <laughs> right. There's enough ginge in there to make it. <laughs> oh, you, you're, you're the right judge for it. Well, right I mean, judge. come on. Yeah. Yeah. I can call us ginge. <laughs> you, that's our word, stats boy. Settle down there, mate. I didn't Settle say down. ranger. I said ginge. Uh, <laughs> Vossi, just like the super supportive like dad who's just like, he's the the ultimate footy dad. Like, he's there at Auskick. He's taking Big H and Cotters to Auskick. Doing the barbecue. He's out there. He's the one, like, 
Uh, you have like volunteers on your Oz kickers. He's like out there just going, come on, boys. Like he's actually like coaching them pretty hard. Don't mind this. He's trying to straighten up Big H's kicking. He's out in the backyard with him every <laughs> night going, come on, Big H, you can do it this time. Oh, he's killed the cat. <laughs> like that sort of vibe. Like that's exactly where he's at. But it's coming along. Yeah. And Cotter's, like he's just like that under, like the the second, the younger son, right? Yeah. He's just like the, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to good so dad. In- come on. <laughs> and like Voss is like, yeah, yeah, I still love you, buddy. I still love you. And away he goes, Collingwood. Craig McRae and the Dakai. Yeah. He has, has, has to be. Absolute beloved stepdad vibes. Yeah. Because like, we already know. My son's the best. My sons are just so good. They love him. They call yeah. him Craig. Yeah. They call him Craig. G'day, Craig. He's like, yeah, you don't have to call me dad. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Like, just, he loves him. They love but him. But if they call him dad, he'd break down in tears of happiness. It will happen yeah. once they win another flag. It's yeah. like, you called me dad. Oh, <laughs> oh God, I'm so happy. That's because their real dad's a loose unit. Yes. That's it. He's out there just punching on in the in the, in the uh, box, stands. Yeah, yeah. Essendon, Brad Scott, and Nick Hind. Why is that? Nick Hind. Because they're actual father-son bricklayers during the week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they rock up like, you're like, oh, I'm going to put in a garden path. Up rock How's Brad Scott and Nick Hind. I Hine. don't know. Just bricklaying. They're All just right. like, they've got the van. It's like <laughs> Scott and Hind bricklayers. They're just out there hanging around the northwest of Melbourne, <laughs> just laying bricks. I love that. I did see him out there the other week, yeah. Brad Scott. It was a bit <laughs> tricky, like. For Essendon, you could also go Zach Merritt, which oh, is like, oh. you know, very nice. But I don't know, just teacher's pet. Like, it's a bit teacher's petty for Zach Merritt. Yeah. You know, it's fine. Yeah, also, but, also, but also Scott was at the AFL, so, you know, he's a bit of a nerd. <laughs> yeah. He is. But Nick Hine, I just love them as <laughs> the bricklayers. Brick That's great. So Freo. This, this is, is a hard an interesting one. one. Justin Longmuir and Jai Miss is like, just what's he doing? Two most what is that haircut? People? Oh, I'm going to have to have a word with these teachers, aren't I? Or Bailey Banfield. He's this very handsome school captain. Yeah. <laughs> but has school he peaked? Captain. His dad's worried that he's peaked in high school. Oh, yeah. Uh, but also, Justin Lomuel could be the boring dad. He, he is be. boring. He he's is like, boring. you get home, he's like, how was your day, dad? And he's like, uh, he puts down his glass, goes, <laughs> oh, hello, son. Yeah, hey, not bad. Yeah, what have you been up to? Yeah. He's like, yeah, I don't know. I, uh, I'm going to go start a roofing business. <laughs> <laughs> Bailey Banfield, I don't know. I feel like we all know these ones. Oh, yeah, uh, I've got one. The overachieving school captain yep. that you have, like, is that what that exactly was? That. The peak of your yeah, life? 16 to 18 was the peak. Oh, that's a rough one. <laughs> But Bailey, Bailey Banfield's handsome enough. He'll be fine. <laughs> Geelong, Chris Scott, and the entire team because, I don't know, oh. he might have like hooked up with all their mums. Um, <laughs> but Geelong, <laughs> the, the he hair. is a beautiful looking man. Yeah. He's got the awesome like he, divorcee. It's the salt yeah. and pepper. The cool dad, salt and like, pepper. He's walking to Lammy's every Friday night. <laughs> he's, got, <laughs> he's got the big mansion on the water. Yeah. He loves it. But for Geelong, it's actually Tom Stewart yeah. and Ollie Dempsey and Lawson Humphreys. <laughs> Because they're, like, they're all the oh, same here. boys are actually playing. Yeah, this is good. great. Like, talk about LeBron and Bronny being the father-son duo in the NBA. We've already got Tom Stewart and Ollie Dempsey and Lawson Humphreys on the same team. This is bloody great. What a hair. I love that, though. But they all sort of just fit. Like, just they're the surfing carpenter family. Yeah. Yep. Tom Stewart, Lawson Humphreys, Ollie Dempsey's like, what are you doing, boys? Oh, we're going for a surf, Dad. So, oh, I'm coming. I'm coming. All right, let's go. <laughs> they all pile into the uh, the sand groper. What is it? The Sandman van. <laughs> Sandman. Love yeah. that. Off they go. T- t- you know, tooling down to Torquay. Gold Coast. <laughs> Dimmer and Jed Walter. Yeah. yeah. Dad, you- I bought a jet ski. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's sick. Let's go. And off they go. They're racing their jet skis around the Gold Coast. Down those bloody marinas and off they go. <laughs> <laughs> they live at BCF. Like, <laughs> 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 they've got matching sunnies. Like, it's great. Yeah, but what about the haircut last week? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm a bit worried about or is that. They just had, no, that, that, no, that was they, they, got, they got absolutely pissed. And he's like, Dad, shave my head. I yeah. dare you. Yeah. <laughs> no, Jed, Jed did something pretty bad. And says, oh, I'm shaving your bloody head. Yeah. <laughs> If you want to play in the ones, I'm going to shave you. GDOS, yeah. Adam Kingsley and Jesse Hogan. They're just working out. The bench yeah. presses, yeah. Don't they're swapping that. creatine recipes. <laughs> <laughs> just like they're making shakes for each other. Just like flexing in the- <laughs> The in man the, shakes. They're yeah. in, in, the, uh, in the breakfast nook in the yeah. morning. Just going, look at that one. Yeah, can you do that? Can you do that? Just like Kingsley's flexing. got him covered, I reckon. I love that. Hawthorne, Sam Mitchell and Ginny. Yeah. Jack Ginnivan. I thought this was going to be- The naughty Sam kid. Mitchell. The naughty kid. Sam Mitchell's like, will die for sure. Nah, Sam Mitchell's like, I just don't get him. His ticker tockers, <laughs> his headbands. Back in my day, like we had none of that. Like we had board games. We had Hodgie trying to punch. And it's just like I don't know. I just, I just don't get it. I'm gonna have to take him. It's camp not even that old. And, I'm gonna have to take him camp and have a big talk. Yeah. <laughs> like Sam Mitchell's 100 percent the dude. I'm, like he's off his. Like, what has he done? But like, they were best mates when they were ki- when he was a kid. Yeah. And now he's hit like 16. He's gone off the rails. He's like. <laughs> I wish his mum was still here. <laughs> Bloody hell, I can't do this by myself, said Sam Mitchell. Uh, Melbourne, 
Oh, I love this one. Simon Goodwin and Clary Oliver. Oh, that's an easy one. That's an easy one. You can get away with anything, Clary. Off the rails. Yeah. They used to own a pub. They don't anymore. No one knows why. <laughs> <laughs> They've always got amazing new cars. No one can explain oh, it. Geez. They've got matching sunnies. <laughs> There's just a lot going on, <laughs> and you don't ask any questions. I think we should yeah, leave it at that one. Leave it that. We all know there's a family like that. North, yes, Clarko and Sheasel. Yeah, just way too beloved, serious. Yeah. Way too serious overachievers. Yeah. Everyone's pretty jealous of how good they are, and secretly kind of hates them. <laughs> but it's all built on a deck of cards. Like Dad's got a secret family with the secretary keeps thinking about leaving Mum, and the son just was like, I just want people to notice me. Dad's just a little bit too overbearing. Everyone knows too good, Jesus. and he's yeah. just a little bit sad. Just a little bit sad, which makes sense being at North. And he's going to be the mm. one that just goes. Oh, just, I don't want to follow him in Dad's footsteps. Like he's been pushed into the gear. <laughs> yeah, and it, like he's like an absolute weapon. And then in two years' time, he just goes. No, oh, I just want to go like traveling. <laughs> he wants to go on a Kentucky. Oh, you better not. He's just going to go lose himself in Thailand for about a month and a half. Yeah, and away we go. There you go. Port. Ken Hinckley and Jason Horn yeah. Francis. Oh, that's easy from the weekend. That's how it all started. Jason, it's all right, mate. I did the same back in my day. Now, <laughs> well, you're all the talent in the world. I've been speaking to your teachers. <laughs> we need to set you some goals. We might have to get some medication. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you've been in the old ADHD. He's got the haircut. Yeah. He's just the wayward youth. And Ken's just sitting down and having big, deep chats with him. But there is, he's probably a little bit too old. Yeah. He's just like, back in my day, this is how we did so it. So, yeah, he, he's Francis. 65 years old and you had him when he was like 45. It's like, shut up, old, old man. Exactly, old dad. It's a little bit too, <laughs> with the, too, too, too much of the old kid. dad yeah, vibe. So, slash accident. And so JHF is just like, shut up. I don't care. I'm going to go hang out with my mates. Look at my hair. <laughs> I'm not getting in the ice bath. Richmond, Adam Uze and Noah Bolter. What? This, is, no, this was a tricky that's, one. That's Adam, the old dad died. Yeah. Oh, this that's is the new very dad. unnecessary part of the story. <laughs> this is the new dad, and like Noah Bolt has just got this rage inside of him yeah. the entire mm. time. So he keeps keying at Amuse's car. <laughs> he's just like, oh, shut up! You're not but he just dad. does dumb things and this doesn't realise he's doing it. This exactly. could be a book, by the way. It's a TV show. <laughs> or, but Noah Bolt is also setting Adam Uze up as a catfish. He just he just <laughs> wants to get him in trouble yeah. with his mum. He's like, yeah, I got him. He just wants him out. He's just sick. He just, okay. But also Noah Bolt also just needs to be loved. Yeah, that's all that matters. He just know? needs a hug. He yeah. just needs that. He just needs someone to sit sit him down and to sort him out. St Kilda, Ross Lyon and Tim Higgins. They run Jack, Higgins. Jack Higgins. Oh, Jack. You were going to say Tim Membry? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tim Membry, member Memberberry. Jack Higgins. <laughs> Jack Higgins. They run a trash and treasure stall together on the weekend. <laughs> every, every Saturday before <laughs> footy. Yeah, they run the stall, the trash and treasure. <laughs> Higgins keeps buying jousting sticks. <laughs> no one knows why. Slime. Ross blows his lid at him like every two days because he's like just not there for dinner sitting down. You've got to be respectful for your mum! Like this kind of vibe. But they're thick as thieves. And they might also be thieves because they keep knocking over servos. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like on a Wednesday, it's just like there was another ser servo robbery. In and it's like, where were you, Ross? Oh. He's like, oh, nah, like, nah, Jack and I were like uh, doing a thing. <laughs> We're doing a thing. <laughs> Sydney, John Longmire and Chad Chunley Warner. How is it not Errol Gordon? No, this is because this is the best relationship. They have so much respect amongst everybody. They are the shining examples of father and sin. There's, a, <laughs> there's an inbuilt arrogance in what they do. Like Longmire has enough sort of like knockabout country bloke about him, but they're also he's like the famous rich country lawyer kind of family, and they okay. come from money now. Comes from comes from like Corowa. Exactly. And so now yeah. though. They've got all the money in the world. They're like that lawyer family that you knew when you were growing up. And you're like, oh, they've got all the best stuff. <laughs> this sucks. And Chad's just got that arrogant way about him. That you're like, oh. Shiny boots. And he's rules got, at everything you know, he does. You kind of want to punch him in the head. Same. But yep. you can't. You know, that kind of vibe. You're yeah. like, oh, but I kind of like him a bit. <laughs> it sucks. West Coast, this is my favourite. Jared Schofield. And Harley Reid. So, oh, You're not my real dad. <laughs> Where's Shut that? up. You can't tell me what to do. <laughs> Where's Adam I'm Jackson? not listening to you at all. Like, he's just out. He's just like, nah. I am the dad. I so am true. the alpha of this family right now. He's, he's very Riley Thrillthorpe and, uh, yeah. and Nick's. But he is like not listening to Schofield. <laughs> Schofield's afraid to go in the house. <laughs> At this point, he's like, Harley's stolen his car. He's written it <laughs> he's off. He's changed the locks. It's yeah. over. It's like, you're on your bike. He just absolute stepdad, stepdad vibes, just not listening to him at all. And then finally, Western Bulldogs, <laughs> so AFL dads. It's Our Bevo. Favorite. Bevo, yeah. And Cody Waitman. Oh, They're fixing cars out in the front lawn of Western Oval. Just like, yeah, pass me the wrench. <laughs> Here you go, Dad. 
<laughs> Off they go. That's what they do. They're a mechanic family. I feel like Cody Wayman wouldn't do that. He would get some. Nah, else Cody's all good. Yeah, he's, he he's, builds skateboards and stuff. Yeah, and then oh, he's flashing he? okay. on the weekends. That's what he does. Yeah. I love it. And there you go. That's the elevator pitch for. Oh uh, my god. <laughs> How that was a very that long. Go? That elevator was sixty-seven thousand floors. Thirteen right? minutes. <laughs> Oh, it's about 13 minutes I spent riding it too. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got that. Can be 13 short, minutes but... on the train on the way. Yeah. Well done, Jim. All well right, done. that is Footy Dads, AFL Dads with me. Now let's go to our chat with Simeon Thomas Wilson to talk all things Crows and power right after this. All right, AFL Today Show, we're here with our man. He's a little bit west of us, I'll tell you that much. It's, you know, the city of churches. Just don't call it that, yeah. Alex. <laughs> Remember, we got punched in the head by the governor of South Australia, basically, for calling it the city of churches and Radelaide on the streets. We're there and gather around. He's like, what are you doing? You're calling it the city of churches? Bang! Punch me in the back yeah. of the scone. It was chaos. We do have our man, Simeon Thomas Wilson. Simeon, what is going on out there in Adelaide? We're going to talk to you about the crows and the power, but how are things going right now? <laughs> Hey guys, yeah, no, going good. It's pretty miserable day in Adelaide at the moment. It's very Melbourne like in its weather. So, yeah, thanks for that. We deserve that too. Yeah, we That's do. We, we do. Um, <laughs> so, you've just been out there dealing with some power stuff today as well, which I believe Jeremy Finlayson's out for the season. What's going on? Yeah, so we went out there, and sometimes, you know, you go out there and they say, oh, can you just maybe ask a question about Jeremy? Like, we all respecting the big questions going to be about Todd Marshall, whether he's going to be okay. And then, all of a sudden, it's like, yeah, what's going on with Jeremy? And yeah, um, so he's come, he's played the game, played the game out. And I think it was a tackle. He said he felt a little bit of discomfort in his sternum, and then felt it's gotten a bit sore over the last couple of days. He's gone into the club yesterday. They've gone, all right, let's go check it out. Done an X-ray of the sternum is fine. Let's X-ray the audience, and yeah, he's got a small laceration on his spleen. So oh. he's, yeah, so the good news is for him, no surgery. The bad news is. Season's pretty much done. Like, I mean, you'd say it's done. That I, I reckon the only way it could probably happen if they made a grand final and they wanted to rush him back. But his season's yeah. done. That's the Petrarca injury as well, yeah. isn't it? But his yeah, not, like, no one near as bad as Petrarca's. <laughs> no one near as bad as Petrarca's, but still not a fun one, I reckon. This has uh, not been a great season for Jeremy <laughs> Finlayson, has it? Jeez. Oh, no, no for out of contract at the end of the season as well, oh, which is complicated scenes. He's been out. He's been almost a little bit on the outer as well. Like it seems like, yeah, it's yeah, it's not a good time for someone to get a lacerated spleen. Breaking news from Adelaide: Jeremy Finlayson done. <laughs> Just run. Yeah, right. yeah. No. He's got a podcast to jump on to co-host and away he goes. Right. Um, but I mean, this does sort of set up an interesting situation for the power, right? Like with Charlie Dixon, his year as well has just been. I don't know. Bad. Horrible. Just bad. Essentially. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to the point where this week he's taken out our beloved Todd Marshall. Like, mm. what's happened there with Charlie and Todd? And, like, what's the fallout been from that as well? Do we know yet? Well, so the good news is Todd Marshall is has avoided sig- um, any significant injury from that. So, which is quite surprising given he looked absolutely distraught Oof. when he was on the on the side. I guess what happened, it hasn't got any sore than it was. So, he's listed as a test for this week. You'd imagine he's not playing though. Like he's yeah. not playing against Rich. You'd imagine he's not playing against Rich, but you wouldn't want to risk him. So that means he misses probably misses this week. Charlie Gibson probably holds his spot. They can bring back Mitch Georgiatis, but he's the only real key for that's actually firing for them at the moment. They're in a yeah. it's a bit of an issue for them. It is a weird situation as well. Like I think we already made the joke on Sunday's show about like Charlie Dixon's just out there trying to keep his spot by injuring his teammates, right? Uh, I mean, <laughs> that was my what, joke. I mean, it was oh, a joke. Yeah. <laughs> like we assume it was a joke, right, uh, Simeon? Are we right? sure like, he on. didn't land on Jeremy Finlayson either and hurt his spleen? Like, what are we doing well, here? That's, I will say, I think somebody did make the joke when we were out at about that. Ah, good. <laughs> so let's stick on the power then. So yep. they're in ninth at the moment, right? Ten and seven for the season. Uh, Talk about again, like you know, a season that's just been a roller coaster ride. You've got Port fans booing Ken Hinckley, um, burning effigy somewhere. <laughs> were they burning? I'm effigies? assuming oh, they I'm were. Assuming. They put they had a what is it a sack Hinckley sign at the out at Alberton, you know, that's not that bad. No effigies. I, I didn't see any effigies. That is still chaos, though. I mean, yeah. what do you sort of put this down to for this power season where they have had these moments where they've looked unreal? I think if you cast your mind back to that gather round win over Essendon, they we looked, were there. They sick. looked absolutely just untouchable. 
And then mm. sort of as soon as the Conor Rose hamstring sort of thing happens, it sort of all just goes a bit wonky, right? Yeah, I think it comes down to a couple of things in my opinion. One, I don't think the um, inclusion, especially in defence, keep uh, um, fix the issues that they had there. That was kind of one there. There's some issues going forward. Like, I mean, the goal kicking has been terrible, but also just their um, – Entries going forward haven't been great for most of this year. I think the other reason is they just don't seem, to, especially in those kind of big games when the when the heat's on, they just don't really seem to stand up a lot. Like we always talk about their big game thing, and even like Sunday on paper it wasn't a big game, but in reality it was a massive game for yeah. them. But now they're out of the eight. They play yeah. Richmond, they should win, but then after that they built a really hard run home. So just mate, yeah, they just don't seem to get the job done in the big games for whatever reason it is. More importantly, how handsome is Connor Rosie up close? Very, very handsome. He's got yeah. lovely eyes. Yeah. Really lovely eyes. The eyes. Oh, the yeah. eyes have it. That's what it's yeah. all about. He, on, he's, he, we did a handsome 22 earlier this year. Connor Rosie was absolutely in the handsome 22. Oh, yeah. I still reckon oh, he'd, he'd, be, he'd be close to cap. He'd be, he'd Carl, be, uh, Langford. <laughs> Carl Langford was captain. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. Okay. Still don't agree. I still don't agree with it. Like, I'm not carrying any baggage here, but I'm just yeah. saying I still don't agree with it. Um, outside of that, though, I mean, a lot of the discussions we've had about power this year obviously been around the Rosie Hammy and stuff like that. But uh, I know going into the season, Alex's big problems with this was like, all right, we've brought in Ivan Soldo, we've brought in Brandon Zerk Thatcher, we've brought in Alir Alir. And it's like, okay, you've brought in Anasava. Some dudes, not Alir Alir, I said Anasava, not Alir. Yeah. yeah. To basically to help Alir Alir and down yeah. back, right? And it just sort of hasn't really pushed them to that next level that was kind of maybe expected from those moves, mm. right? Yeah, I guess yeah, 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 you look at those guys and, I mean, there's, well, Zerf Thatcher, I think Essen kind of maybe wanted to keep, so they did the trade for Jersey. Which, and I, I've actually been probably more impressed with Zerf Thatcher the most out of all of them. I, it's probably surprising more, but, like, Salva Regulier didn't get in Geelong's team for a lot of the time. Soldo was behind Nan Curvis. Jordan Sweet has actually played okay recently, was on Team English. Not exactly, they weren't not exactly like A-graders. They were kind of, I guess, hoping, they were hoping maybe they'd do what they did with Alir Alir, you know, get a guy in, all of a sudden, you know, one man's trash is another person's treasure and they find, you know, an all-Australian. But I guess there's a reason why these clubs were happy enough for these guys to go once they paid the price for them. Yeah. Well, it wasn't like, it was also that, but it's like you're bringing in guys who have come from teams that were getting smashed last year, Essen, and getting a lot of points kicked on them. And Radigalia played, what, six or seven games in defense? <laughs> We'll give him a big contract to play fullback when he's played a few games there. And if he can't run and jump at the footy as an intercept, what does he actually offer other than just someone who seemingly makes more mistakes than he avoids? Yeah, he's made some pretty bad mistakes. I know, I know you talk about you still learning and building that footy IQ, but at the same time, he needs to play. So he's yeah. going to make mistakes as he plays and then hurts you out there. Yeah, like Dirk that year, I think probably – Got a bit of a, had a bit of a bad run last, like probably I think yeah, a bit of more of a bad run last year. The fact is, I think he, he was trying to play as you know the number one key defender, yeah. whereas here, out of report, out like he play maybe as a two at three when they had two, three key defenders. That actually, was able to play. I reckon he's played actually a lot better than he than he has. Yeah, this year I reckon he's played a lot better than he has last year. So I think he's been a probably a positive for them. But yeah, outside of that, Ruggie Lee has looked like him and a lead look a bit weird together sometimes. And then Soldo had a really good start this season. But, you know, last game, I think, when he played GWS, he was absolutely touched up there. And then Sweets had his, some good moments, but some, yeah, some not so good moments. So I haven't really set the world on fire. Yeah. I mean, last thing, I guess, for power is, like, with all the talk about Ken and his job security, I guess, like, do you feel like there's a at least a sort of movement in towards, like, ah, oh, look, maybe if we finish out the year we make the finals, he's safe for another year? Or do you think if they miss, it might be just like the old uh, on your on your bike? Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah, I think, I think he'd have to have a deep run finals. Really? I think, that, mm. I think, and that could make, you know, maybe, I don't, is a prelim enough? Yeah. That's and the, that's the question. I don't know. You, and you look at their next four games uh, before, you know, they go into the final. So even just the remaining games, their only one where you guarantee they'll start favourite is the Richmond game because they've lost the last three showdowns. They've got to go to Perth, playing the Demons in Melbourne. They've got to play the Swans and Carlton. So 
not the best of run homes. Like they could very easily finish this season on eleven or twelve wins, and that's not making finals. Yeah, they and those are the games that the one thing we always talk about with Port Adelaide. They don't get it done in those in those big games. They re, they don't get it done more, you know. And that's every game is pretty much a big game, and they all yeah. and they've got that showdown record recently. It's such a t- tough run home for them. I'll tell you what, I hate that Carlton one, though. The fact that it's at Marvel, like I know that, what, Carlton feel vaguely good about, what, winning over there for the first time ever this year. Yeah. I just still don't like that because power aren't that bad at the old Marvel. I and Carlton could definitely cough that one up. As I'm a Swans like, fan, I don't think the Swans have beaten Port in like a decade. There we go. There's yeah. a bit of a ray of sunshine. Don't mind that. Uh, <laughs> really quickly, Adelaide as well. I mean, I want to say quickly because they are 14th and 6 and 10 and 1. Uh What's the vibe with the Crom at the moment there, Simeon? I think it's a lot better than it was. I reckon it was absolutely dire after the Richmond loss. That was one that was probably one of the worst games of footy I've ever seen. And I was so <laughs> yeah, that was a terrible game. But then also I think after it, just the pile on, I think every, all the Crows fans are like, we've been patient, we've had enough. Yeah. The fact that they beat GWS, they beat St Kilda, and young, young kids are actually showing something, it's there's a little bit more optimism now. You know, like you're looking forward to 2025. You've seen Riley Philthorpe do what he's doing. You know, Billy Dowling finally gets a chance. We were calling, calling good for weeks. Finally gets a chance. He does well. Zach Taylor isn't the sub and plays well. Hugh Bond actually came in. Like, we were surprised that Hugh Bond actually debuted, but he looked good as a lockdown defender. So I guess we've, for now, the Crows fans, it's all about giving hope for 2025. So they're giving, they're giving them a little bit at the moment. I love that. Our uh, yeah. our mutual mate, the Phantom, was all over Billy Dowling and like his, you know, rookie, oh, his junior stats and everything. Yeah. He was all over Billy Dowling. He's like leading the Billy Dowling train. And then he got out there and he's been awesome. I love that. I, I so, thought this was going to be us leading the uh, thriller. Well, uh, the thriller bandwagon. Yeah. Like I've been driving this literally for years now. Like, But the fact that he came back and looks like Grizzly Adams. I love him. Like Riley Thrillthorpe. He's the thriller. Like, he is just an absolute weapon right now. He looks incredible, and I'm all over it. Like, yeah. this is awesome, right? Like, he's got this potential to be the next, like, basically the next Tex as a cult yeah. hero for the Crom. Oh, that's – and that's – it. I guess it isn't probably a good thing when you're relying so much on such a young player, but – one, I know they started the season terribly, but he was one of their best players in preseason. Like everybody yep. at the Crows would say, he's going to have a breakout season. He's looking amazing. And then he got, you know, was it the last two minutes of their preseason game against West Coast, does his meniscus, and he's mm-hmm. out until now. So I get that's obviously been lost for them and their forward line looks so bad at the start of the season. So the fact that he's back and he came in, was it, in a quarter, he kicked two goals, seven disposals, something like that, looked, looks massive. Like he looks generally huge but like, it looks like a guy that could just dominate people like pros there's a pros match getting really excited about which is really good for adelaide going forward yeah. to 2025 so you know i guess how good he can he be i guess yeah it's it's exciting about him at the moment i love that he did his uh mcl or whatever mm-hmm. and then just spent the next like four months on the bench press yeah just bench press and bicep curls going just, back yeah. to the tra- the timed old tradition of adelaide dudes having ridiculously jacked arms i'll pay that yeah <laughs> It's good. Um, outside of this as well, I mean, are there, I guess, you know, not to bash home with the idea of the coaching stuff, but like we know that Matthew Nix has got the what extension. About the drafting? And like it's more about the simple ideas like what do you we want to see from the Crows in this run home for Nix to keep his gig? Yeah, I think it's – I think it would be a big shock if, if they make a change, but I think – yeah, this is more about the showing size and seeing what the younger players can do. Like the other one everyone kind of talks about here is do they play Dan Curtin? You know, like he's playing in the mid he's playing in the midfield now in the Sanford. He had twenty two disposals, two goals on the weekend. Was he like I mean, do you give him I mean, an easy way for Nick to get a lot of fans on side would be Dan Curtin, come back in, play give him some center bounces, play him in the middle and see what he can do, kind of thing. Like so I think it's more about them just building for 2025 now, seeing you know, seeing what guys can do in different positions or where you see them in your, when your team's actually going to be good. Yeah. Um, anything else you want to hear on with the Crows? Yeah, Tex. Is he, does he go on? Do you say, right, oh, Tex, you've done your job here, but this is Thriller's time. You are just going to be clogging space and you move him on. Either ask him to retire or trade him for pick sort of 45 to someone like the Ds because – He's been in Adelaide forever. He's a broken hill boy. Do you see him playing footy anywhere other than Adelaide? I don't personally, and I think 
I, I've got a feeling he'll play on. I just think you one, he's still playing pretty well. He's still full out and he's still very important to that forward line. I get I find the the um the debate around whether he's actually good for Phil Thorpe and Floggity a really interesting one. I think you you still probably need his experience, especially with Rory Sloan retiring from with his eye injury. You don't want was it however many like you know, five hundred games plus going out the door in one off season. So I feel like, yeah, I reckon you probably just give him one more year and maybe say, like, this is this year's going to be it. This like next year, twenty twenty five. Let's not have what we have now. When oh, you know, rival clubs could give him another year. Not text. This is going to be your year. You're going to yeah. be development like we thought you're going to be. Like you're just going to help these guys, and then that's it. Yeah. Is there the potential worry that it turns out to what Tomahawk's done this year, which, you know, first couple of weeks, great, and then didn't get a kick for a month, and now his foot's exploded? Like, there sure has to be that consideration, especially, like, I'm assuming he's very well paid. Yeah, oh, definitely. The hundred, yeah, definitely they would be. I think, I think you do, but I reckon they have to weigh up, I guess, what he does for them off the field. Like, you always speak to people. He's, Jordan Dawson's a captain, but Taylor Walker is still the spiritual leader there. Yeah. No, like he's he is he's still the leader there in, in so many ways. So I guess yeah, you, I guess you got to weigh that up. So it is a it's a big decision for them to make. It does also like there is a terrifying factor when you just go, oh god, Tex is just you know lead Mark. He's bombed it from yeah. fifty three. You're like, oh god, is he going to kick eight on us today? Like it's that I don't mind just keeping that guy around for just that yeah. extra year. Let the other guys develop around him as well. He Not doesn't yet. have to play every game. He's mm-hmm. Tex. It's yeah. fine. Just I play Adelaide he kicked Oval seventy six goals last year. Yeah, like, what exactly. Are we about? And that like, was his, chaos. It was his best year ever, and he was never going to do that again. And we've seen that this year with the downturn of how the Crows have gone. It's yeah. just, I personally think he should either retire or go to another club because I think that'd be the best for him and the best for the Adelaide Crows. Yeah. I, I reckon I don't see him playing another club, so it's probably going to be retire or play on. Yeah, nice one. All right, do you? All right, before we bounce here, Simeon, do you think the Power actually play finals? I don't. Uh, I don't, I don't think I agree. We yeah, did. I did a lot of a couple of weeks ago, and I didn't have them playing finals. So, and that was. Bef- I think that was. Yeah. This this loss to Gold Coast is a massive one. I don't think they're gonna make it. Yep. Uh, and I guess the biggest one is what's your favorite? Uh, I don't know. Treat at Adelaide Oval. Oh do yeah. We, do we have like a favorite food item at Adelaide Oval? Oh jeez, that's an interesting question. Um, did you have the horrible pie? Uh, yes, I had the horrible pie. Someone that, had a, that was a, a horrible pie. That was at Norwood, though. Oh, I had the horrible pie at Norwood. Yeah. Whereas oh, the Adelaide yeah. Oval, chips my, are amazing. my favorite hot chips in Australia. I'm going to the Gabba this weekend, so the theory is going to be put to the test. Nice. But so far this season, Adelaide Oval, best chips. Right. I'm with you on the chips. I was going to say, shout out to uh, the, the stuff, the food at Mount Barker for Gabba Round. Now, that was that was generally impressive out there. Nice. We've got to get there. Yeah. The uh, What I did love about Adelaide Oval was just like the, uh, hey, Jim, you've got four beers. I'm like, how did you know that? <laughs> oh, yeah, the, scanner <laughs> it was, thing. the scanners, it was nuts. I loved it. It was scary. <laughs> Either way, I also love Imperial Pints. All right, this has been <laughs> AFL Today. Thank you so much, Simeon, for jumping on and giving us all things Adelaide. This has been great, mate. Thanks so much, guys. <laughs> all right, how good was that chat with Simeon, Thomas Wilson? Alex, awesome. I know that you dug that. I mean, basically, we kind of half laid the boot into the power. Yeah. And then Fair we, enough, we, we, what, we retired Jeremy Finlayson. Yep. Oh, we put him out of the finals. Yes. Did you retire Charlie Dixon? He might be next on the No, well, on the, the problem is they got no Fords and he has to keep playing. Alex so. tried to retire Tex. Yeah, I did actually. Uh, yeah. He was having no bar of it. Either way, let's Time to get him to Melbourne, actually. Mm. To Melbourne? Yeah. I just don't think he'd bother. Why would you bother? Really, why would you bother? Uh, let's finish off the way we finish off every Wednesday show with the Coleman and the Brownlow Tracker updates. Uh, the Brownlow's looking very interesting. Stats Boy's got some vibes here. He doesn't like the AFL.com.au one. No, I think you guys will agree, agree with me on this one. The AFL one literally gave three votes to Nick Dacos. So on I'm, Friday night. On Friday night where I didn't even think he was in the top five Are best they? players. That is an absolute joke. The predictor is usually very accurate, as we've talked about even last year. So that, I think all the other votes have been pretty accurate this year, but they literally gave three he votes to Nick Dacos. He was not in the Dacos. top five players on the ground. No. He, he might was horrible. possibly on some sites sneak of one vote, but he wasn't, I don't think he, he went was. He went at like there. 20% efficiency yeah. and they got belted. Yeah. So I got no idea what the AFL are doing there. Maybe so people just chuck a few more bets on. I'm, I'm not sure what, the, what they're thinking Whoa, about that one. That's boy. I shouldn't, out all guns. Guns. <laughs> yeah, maybe I shouldn't say that. Jeez. But yeah, I'm, I'm not there. Shams terrain. <laughs> Shams, yeah, yeah. Jeez. Bit of woes over here. Oh yeah, look, this guy's <laughs> slipping in the draft. Put your bets on him going higher. Nah, I'm like, joking. What are we doing? But. I'd be yeah, steering clear of the AFL side at the moment because yeah. that well, is a joke. did come second in the best on ground for the uh, 
actual match report. So just saying. Oh, yeah, nah. but the, it's probably the same people. Watching right the game, he was not. No. In. Anyway, that's, at the moment yeah, that's though, the your Brownlow yeah. leaderboard: Cripps, Heaney. Well, Heaney doesn't count. So Dunskys now. Yep. Dacos, Bond, Lockie, Neal. Who? I think I think it's out of Cripps. Neil and Dacos. There was someone who had 41 touches on the weekend well, that is I've, going to fly I've home. got money on him from the start of the season. So, Woe yeah. Errol is currently sitting in this tracker at about eighth, which feels about right. The he AFL one is fourth. Home, so, yeah. So, Whereas yeah, last yeah. year, he from this point on, he had the mo- I think he had like 20 votes in the last eight weeks. So, so 26 P Crips. Well, that's a big number. What does it get on the AFL tracker there? Stats Same, there? yeah. I think 26. Jeez, that's a big number. 25, sorry. 25. 25. So, yeah. They've given him two in a losing effort last week, which seemed fair because he was everywhere. And no Might one get them. one. They I gave reckon. him three on the uh, AFL one as yeah, well. Yeah, split the difference, mm. 1.5. Yeah. Is that? That works. Right? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, outside of this, I think you're right, Alex, with the Errol Gordon run home, mm. and I'd probably be looking at him. That's my vibe. Do you think – you- Look, I, just, I still think Cripps <laughs> runs, they runs, said it last runs year. away with it, but, I mean, yeah. Gordon's probably the best price, like, sort of outsider at this point. Yeah, and – Nara Anderson also would have picked up three again on the weekend. But yeah. how many more games does he play at home? Yeah, he only goes by home, yeah. Yeah, but they're still he might still pick up one and twos here and there. Like, I reckon he might have got three against uh, North Melbourne. Uh, losing effort. Yeah, or well, not three, but definitely two yeah, or one or, or two. One yeah. or two, I reckon, yeah. But so there's games like he's the one that's everyone sort of – because, like, you just – Make you, it late, yeah. You think it's, oh, it's Gold Coast. Who People cares? don't think about him as much. But it's yeah. Nara Anderson. It's also because I bet you if Nara Anderson walked in this room right now, everyone would be like – is that dude? Uh, no. You might think Yeah, that. I was going to say, I know exactly what he looks yeah. like. My That's beloved it. Noah Anderson. <laughs> yeah. Are you kidding? Also, a very tall guy, like, in the Suns uniform. We know who he is. Ready to punch No, no, but if he just walked <laughs> up, in, if he walked in a t-shirt and jeans, you'd be yeah. like, who's the new tech? No, <laughs> no, he wouldn't. Lockie Neal, three-time Brownlow winner. It would be a ridiculous That's disgusting. outcome, wouldn't it? I think this year he's been better than, obviously, last year. He shouldn't have won it last year. But he, he shouldn't have three Brownlows. That's a joke. an incredible purple No, it's not. If you win three Brownlows, that just shows how good you are over seasons. It's not lucky. Oh, that COVID year, he won by a hundred. He was so no, far I agree away. That one. The best I think he, if he wins this year, he yeah, should have last two. Last year was a joke. Come on. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Coleman, let's do it. The Coleman, my beloved Charlie Kerno, should be another seven goals in front, but he is I not. Know. He's on 49. We have Ben King at 45. Jesse Hogan, 45. My beloved big Harry Mackay, son of Michael Voss, apparently, 42. And the J train. Jakey Waterman on 41. Can Oscar Allen win it from here is my question. <laughs> Oscar Allen, we've got his no. bobblehead over there. Uh, no, definitely not. That sucks. Maybe next year. Maybe next year. Doubtful. I really love a bit of Oscar Allen, though. The fact that Oscar Allen kicked three last week was very nice. But mm. J-Train, Oscar Allen, eh, I w- like if Oscar was out for the season, I'd still love a bit of Jackie Waterman just for a sneaky nah. like, run home. He's got to kick 10 he in one game. kick 10 in a game <laughs> no, and he, it's all over. Charlie could also do that because I think they play North and still have a game against West Coast yes, in the bag. So yes. I still think Charlie... It's Charlie's to lose, yeah. I think he bounces back from the three goals seven uh, last week and has a big game probably against North and I think uh, a couple of, couple of other big ones in the run home. I think Jesse Hogan is going to make a late charge as well because well, he's got five, four last two weeks. Before that, he was horrible I for said like that two last months. week that you he say that, has yeah. a couple of good games where yeah. he can kick some so, goals coming in. He's, he's got g- Gold Coast away from home this week. Mm-hmm. I think there's a game against Essendon thrown in there. Like their run home is against like teams that they need to beat to get in finals as well. The eight-point game, Jim. Yeah, the eight-point so game. So he needs to kick goals. For them to get eight he's going to he's gonna pass Ben King in the uh, call I reckon, next yeah, couple of weeks. If he fires, he's a chance of chasing down – Charlie. Yep. Nice. Especially if Charlie's kicking 310 this week. <laughs> Doesn't help. I'll smash you, Stats Boy, if there he kicks go. 310. Uh, that's- right. That's it, though, for the AFL Today Show for today. We'll be back with the AFL Today Show tomorrow. That's right. The Thursday night team show. That'll be pretty fun. So, in the meantime, thank you to the Ding Guy for jumping on. Alex? I'll see you next week. Yeah, that's oh. right. No Thursday or Sunday show. No, up in Brisbane oh, watching, watching uh, Swans take on the Lions in Ooh. one of the games of the season. Classic 110 p.m. game. Like at Brisbane, like Sydney at 110 on a Sunday. Takes you back to the Channel 9 days. Mm. They had like Dennis Cometti Drew commentating Morfitt the game. Coming, commentating nah. that one on a Sunday Arvo. That's a good one. That's nah. a great Sunday nah. game. Dennis, now nah, Dennis Cometti on Channel 9. I'm going back further and way further than that. I'm yeah. going Drew Morfitt. Love me <laughs> Drew Morfitt. Just one of those great weird footy voices. Yeah. yeah. Sandy, Sandy Roberts. Roberts. Sandy oh, Roberts is good. Oh yeah. my God, we should have saved time. <laughs> <laughs> you love Sandy Roberts. Thank you, Stats Boy. Thank you. Uh, remember to smash a like for the AFL Today show across all the socials, of course. You can follow all the other shows as well Cricket Today podcast, Football Today podcast, NBA Australia, NFL Australia, and Hold All Tickets. Subscribe, subscribe, star, and like. I tried to say all three of those yeah, words at once. Just, that was very good. <laughs> just do it. Do the damn thing, would you? On your podcast app, on YouTube, etc. 
get around them like, I don't know, me getting around an elevator pitch for footy dads. <laughs> this is going to be the best TV show ever. All right, that's it. We'll catch you tomorrow for more AFL Today. Until then, look up yourselves and remember, footy's back. If you like this show, make sure you check out all the other shows in the Sports Today Network, from the AFL Today Show to the Cricket Today Podcast, the Football Today Podcast, as well as NBA Australia and NFL Australia. With Sports Today, your sporting needs have never been easier to cover.